Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be discussing tricked out AKs, AKA alpha builds, uh, whatever you wanna call them, just uh, pimped out AKs in general, but mostly I just wanted to use this video as an excuse to show off this latest AK build I got going on here. This is my Kalashnikov USA KR-103, and obviously it looks a little bit different than probably the last time you guys saw it. And there's a good reason for that, which we'll get into here shortly. But we're also here to discuss your guys' AKs, because a little while ago on Instagram, I put out a question to you guys for you to send me some pictures of your AK builds for me to judge on my YouTube channel. And you guys did not disappoint. You guys sent me a f ton of pictures of your AK builds. And we're gonna be going through some of those today. Whatever I say about your AKs, doesn't really matter. If it works well for you, that's totally fine. It's just gonna be all based on my own personal opinions and preferences on how to set up AKs. But again, it's my YouTube channel and you guys agree to it, so that is what we're gonna be doing. So for those of you who've been following the channel for a while now, you'll know that for about a year and a half now, I have been rocking the SureShot USA Mark III chassis. I've been using that same chassis on a couple different guns, testing it out, but over the course of testing it out, I fell in love with it. I love that thing and for good reason. It does a couple of really good things for the Kalashnikov platform, one being that it free floats the barrel, uh, which a lot of handguards do not do. So you're gonna be able to squeeze out a little bit more accuracy out of your AK. How much that actually matters, it's up to the shooter. Honestly, I think that most AKs are gonna be more accurate than most shooters, especially me. You know, I try, okay? Another thing that it does, which I really enjoy, is it really helps mitigate the felt heat on the handguard. Uh, AKs in general get very hot as you're firing them, so this is very important if you're gonna push an AK into a more suppressive fire roll. I have a whole video going over this where you're just taking a standard AK and then pushing it kind of into the auto rifle roll, which is being done by a lot of units, mostly in the Russian military, but you also see Ukrainians doing it too, where they'll take just standard AKs and throw a drum mag or an RPK mag inside of them and run them as auto rifles. With that being said, I thought that the SureShot USA Mark III chassis was an excellent candidate for a handguard to put on an AK if you're gonna try to push the gun into that type of roll. And the handguard in general was just really good. And it was almost too good to the point where I kind of started getting bored of my AK. I began to realize when I was looking at my AK that it kind of just lost some of the spunk that it once had. Um, and then I came to the realization that I committed the cardinal sin. I AR'd my AK. Now don't get me wrong, the SureShot chassis, I like the look of it, but at the same time, I felt like my AK lost that kind of aggressive look to it. Um, and I really wanted to kind of just change things up. And this is also a YouTube channel where AKs are one of my focuses. So it'd be kind of dumb to just stick to one type of furniture for the rest of my career here. And that would be kind of boring for you guys too, because the AKs would always look the same and I wouldn't be talking about anything different. So in today's video, we're gonna be going over this AK, the things I changed about it, the things that I kept the same, the things I like, the things that I don't like. And then we're gonna go into your guys' AKs and take a look at what abomination you guys made. But before we get into it, a word from our sponsors. Today's video is sponsored by Venture Surplus, the place you wanna go if you're looking for very high quality, specifically US surplus gear. They have tons of cool kit on there, so if you're maybe trying to build out like a old school GWAT type of kit for either LARPing at the range or for a Milsom event, they're the place to go to. Now what I've seen a ton of on their website are old school Eagle Industries pouches. So if you're trying to build out an old school GWAT kit like you see on this MBAV, you might want to check it out. Now they also have a ton of uniforms as well as other surplus gear, but what I found most interesting was their medical section. So they have a ton of legit medical gear from North American Rescue, from tourniquets all the way to fully built out IFAX. The selection on the website is pretty huge. If you want to grab something for yourself, go to the website and use code BLUEGENE10 at checkout and it gets you 10% off your entire order there. So use the discount code to grab yourself some quality military surplus or medical gear. And big thank you to Venture Surplus for sponsoring today's video. Now I'd also like to mention Badlands Ammunition. They are a huge supporter of this channel. They provide a ton of ammunition for me to use and shoot in these videos. So if you wanna grab yourself some quality ammunition, 
Go to their website and use code BLUEJEAN at checkout. It gets you a discount there and it helps me out because the more ammo you guys buy, the more they are willing to send me. So go check out Badlands Ammunition. All right guys, going into this AK here. Again, this is my Kalashnikov USA KR-103. I have a whole review on this gun where I put 4,000 rounds through it and this thing is holding up great. Honestly, between this AK-103 and the PSA AK-103, which I still use, it's kind of like my de facto blank fire gun for Milsom West now, but this is kind of like my main AK these days, just because um, from what I've seen, the Kalashnikov USA AKs are holding up pretty good, especially after the round count that I put through this thing. I think I'm up to 6,000 rounds on this thing so far. The internal wear is looking great on it, and it has been completely reliable. Uh, knock on wood, I haven't had a single malfunction on this gun. It is kind of my baby these days, and to me, I honestly think that Clash of God USA is doing a pretty good job. I know that they've had kind of a checkered pass, but from what I'm seeing these days, uh, the rifles are looking pretty good. Now, the first thing that we're gonna be talking about today, guys, is the dust cover. So I am using the Texas Weapon Systems Dogleg Gen 3 dust cover. I've been using one of these things since I essentially started this channel. Uh, there's a lot of FUD lore behind the dog leg uh, dust covers that they don't hold zero. I have a whole video that I did way back in the past where I tried to prove this wrong and I think I did. Um, as long as that you mount these things correctly, um, you're not gonna have any issues with it losing zero. So there's this tab, I don't know if you can see it right here, but there's this tab right here, it's kind of like a little slit on the back of the dust cover. And what that little slit is for, I think it's yeah, right here, that is for you to bend in with pliers. So a lot of people, when they install these dust covers, they forget to bend that part in to their specific receiver on their AK, and they're like, oh, why is it loose and why am I losing zero? You have to bend this part in, that way it is nice and tight. Honestly, I think that these Texas Weapon System dust covers are like the gold standard of how you should mount your optics on your AKs, at least here in the United States. And these things are awesome. I know you can get like side rails and different things like that, or you can get other dust cover railed options. Like the big popular one is like the Gucci thing to get is like the Zenico B33 dust cover, I believe it was what it's called. But from what I've seen, those things might not be so good. So I have a whole video where my buddy Talon came down with his uh, Bulgarian AK-74 and he had that thing completely decked out in Zenico. And he had some weird malfunctions where rounds were ending up in the trigger area. And I posted the, the malfunctions that he was having and I started getting comments saying that was probably because of the dust cover. And then I started seeing comments on my Instagram when I posted the same video. And then guys like from Meridian who make really good AKs and they're big in the AK game, they said it first and then I started seeing comments in my YouTube channel and stuff like that. I have never seen anything like that happen with the Texas Weapon Systems dust cover over the thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds I have put through AKs with these things on. So I think that they're perfectly fine. Honestly, these things uh, really kind of like tickle my former saw gunner autism. Uh, just reminds me of running a saw again. Um, <laughs> I love these things, and even after doing that, this thing will hold zero. So in that video where I tested this thing out, I opened and closed it, I took it completely off the gun, put it back on the gun on two different AKs, and shot them out to like 400 yards, and I was having no problems with it. So if you have one of these things and have to take apart your gun to like clean it or whatever, don't worry about it holding zero. As long as you have it installed correctly, um, they are pretty easy to install. All you have to do is take out the rear sight on your AK, which honestly, that is like the hardest part, but with a little bit of elbow grease, and a punch, you should be able to get that thing out no problem. But as long as you follow the instructions that comes with the dust cover rail, you shouldn't have any issues. Another thing I really like about the Texas Weapon Systems dust covers is that it doesn't need to be mounted on a specific handguard. So the Zenico dust cover needs to be mounted on the Zenico handguard. But with the Texas Weapon Systems dust cover, since it is mounted back here where the rear sight would be, you can run whatever you want up here. So it leaves you up to kind of like use your own imagination and kind of create your own AK without being, you know, forced to use Zenico handguard mounted with a Zenico dust cover. So going into the side here, one thing I changed before even installing any of the other furniture was the safety. So the safety that comes with the Kalashnikov USA KR-103 is not this uh, Krebs enhanced safety that you see here. And honestly, 
I'm not too happy with this thing. Um, I think I chose the wrong Krebs safety. I chose the one that has this little notch here on the side. And as you can see here, what this is meant for is, is a bolt hold open. So AKs don't have a bolt hold open. This thing's gonna, yeah, do that. So this is what this is meant for. And uh, honestly, the reason I don't like this thing is because, let me just get this. Ugh, God, like I, I don't see there's like really any reason to have that. But the reason I don't like it is because you don't have a dust cover anymore. So the safety on an AK is the dust cover. So if the safety is down, you can see it's completely exposed. On a normal AK with a normal safety, when you flip this thing up, it's gonna make cover up um, that hole that's gonna be right there. But with this notch right here for the bolt hold open, you know, you still have, you have a place for things to get into. So if like there was dust and mud and all that kind of stuff, um, it's gonna have a much easier time getting inside of your gun uh, versus like if it didn't have this little hole right here. How much I should worry about that as a civilian in current times, um, I don't know, probably not at all. Probably for you guys, if you have one of these things, you're not gonna run into any problems. This is kind of like one thing that I'm not a huge fan of, but I am a fan of the enhanced safety in general. I think it is much superior to the standard AK safety where you have to use your like your middle finger. Uh, for the longest time when I was testing out this gun, I was using the, just the original safety that it came with, which was kind of new to me because all the AKs I was using before that um, had enhanced safety. So that's one thing about PSA is a lot of their AKs, I mean, all of their AKs comes with an enhanced safety. The reason that Kalashnikov USA didn't do that is because they wanted to be clone correct in how actual AK-103s from Russia ship, which don't, I guess, ship with an enhanced safety but they have an option on their website that you can buy these things. And I uh, stupidly, without thinking about it, got this one. I am planning on changing that though. Now, as you can see on top of the dust cover, I'm using an EOTech as well as this primary arms magnifier. Um, I think that EOTechs are by far the best looking optics on AKs. Just boxy optics in general look really good on AKs. I'm not sure what it is, but I'm using the EOTech EXPS3 on here paired with this kind of like really beat up and well used primary arms magnifier. This thing has been working out well. Actually in the shooting of today's video, uh, the one problem that I was having is the rain kind of like fogging this thing up. So it was kind of hard to see some of the targets out in the distance, but after wiping it down, it wasn't a huge deal. I am planning on getting a different magnifier. Um, Primary Arms has like a micro magnifier that I really want to test out, but this is working out well so far. Now, one thing I will say on the side of the AK here, I usually have an extended charging handle. So, Actually, in the filming of this video, I lost the extended charging handle that was on this gun. I had a Texas Weapon Systems hobnob, which I have used for thousands of rounds on this gun before. And randomly today, um, it was either when I was like charging the gun or when I was firing, it flew off. It is gone. Um, I have heard people having this issue before with those particular um, extended charging handles, I swear to God that I cranked that thing down as well as Loctited it. So like, I'm not sure what I could have done differently for that thing to not fly off. So big sad and uh, F in the chat for the hobnob charging handle. Now moving up front here to the handguard. This is the main part that I really wanna talk about today and is the newest addition to an AK that you know I have never used before. And this is the TDI X47 handguard. This is their kind of quad rail handguard. And I saw this thing and I immediately knew that like, this is the look that I really want to go for. You know, as you know, I'm a huge fan of quad rails, uh, have a bunch of guns with quad rails on them, but I've never had an AK that had a quad rail on it. So I needed to change that. And full disclosure, I am homies with the guys over at TDI. Um, they're excellent, like they've been with the channel for a very long time. I've been using their stuff well before they started sending me stuff to do reviews on. I use their like AKML uh, M-Lock handguard for a very long time. I still use it on a couple different AKs. No money has ever been exchanged between me and them. Uh, they just send me product every once in a while to try out and put on the channel. And I legitimately like their stuff. I think they make a ton of cool furniture. And if you're looking to build out an AK that looks like a AK that would be used in current war, TDI is a really good place to go. There's, you can see their products on a lot of different people's AKs. 
in this current conflict. So if you want an AK that looks like something that is currently being used, TDI is pretty good stuff. Now, the thing that interested me the most about this handguard, other than the uh, aggressive aesthetics that it has on it, is due to how modular it is. So the way that I have it currently set up is in one of the three configurations that you can have this thing in. If you wanted to just use the lower handguard and have something else on top, you can do that. You can do it also how I have it right here, or I'm using the lower and the upper section of the handguard, or you can use this section that you see right here. So this would mount into this handguard where you see you're here, using these little screw holes right here, and you can mount your optics and it would go as far back as this EOTech. So if I wanted to, I could take this dust cover off and mount this thing on here. I could essentially have the EOTech in the same spot, but I'm not sure if I'd be able to mount the, the mag, I wouldn't be able to mount the magnifier. So that is the main reason why I chose to go with the dust cover rail instead of using this thing that comes with a handguard because I wanted a little bit more options. But if you just plan on using a red dot, you can just buy this handguard because it comes with all these different sections on here and you're pretty much ready to go. This thing is also incredibly easy to install. So part of the fun part about AKs, and I think most AK guys would agree with me, especially guys who go into like modifying their guns, is actually like going through the process of mounting a lot of AK stuff. Like a lot of handguards are pressure fit into the receiver. So the handguard would actually kind of slip into the space in the receiver here. And you have to like usually take a rubber mallet and kind of hammer that thing down. With this handguard, which I assumed is something I would have to have done, uh, you don't have to do that at all. So it actually just screws in using these hex screws that you see on the side here. And you can loosen this thing up and it will fit directly over the receiver. And then you tighten it down over the receiver. And then you do the same thing with the retainer cap up here. So this is something that is usually a huge pain in the ass to do, this retainer cap up here. Because a lot of handguards, you know, a lot of, most AKs are just built completely different. They have slightly different specs to them. So getting this handguard retainer over the end of your handguard can sometimes be a huge pain in the ass and you have to like sand things down and you know really fuck with it for a long time. This thing you can loosen it up up front here and then fit it perfectly with that handguard retainer inside the, uh, the handguard itself and then tighten it down over the handguard retainer. So it is locked in up here and is also locked in back here. And this thing is solid as fuck. If you wanted a mounted optic up here or a laser or whatever else you want, it is definitely gonna hold zero. This is one of the most rigid uh, handguards I've ever felt. And a huge positive to this upper section of this Picatinny up here over the gas tube, it is not a gas tube rail. So something like the Ultimac rail, which is something that I really kind of like moved away from the Ultimac rail. It's okay, it's kind of a cheaper option to mount optics up there if you really wanted to, or a light, but that thing gets incredibly hot since the Ultimac rail is literally just a railed gas tube. So when you're like holding that thing, you're holding onto bare metal that all that burning gas is traveling through. And the Ultimac rails are historically can cook optics. And honestly, I think that this thing is a much better option. So if you want to mount a peck up here or an optic, you're not gonna have to worry about it like burning out because it is not a railed gas tube. One issue that I did find on this particular handguard and I have already brought it up to TDI and they're pretty cool. They'll actually listen to me if I say there's a problem and they'll actually like fix that issue is that I cannot fully collapse this buttstock right here. So I'm losing the capability of completely locking this thing in and it's just because of how fat this handguard is right here, just do the material. I'm sure I could like sand, sand that down, but TDI did say that they're gonna fix that issue. It's not huge, but I don't know. Time to trim the fat, TDI. Now that's about it when it comes to this particular AK. To me, this is the look of an aggressive looking Kalash, and this is how an upgraded AK should look without turning it too much into an AR-15. You know, there's some things on here that are fairly modern, but to me, like, I haven't lost any of that aggressive AK look when building this thing out, but I think it's time now to judge your guys' AKs and take a look at some of the AKs that you sent me and maybe compare it to my own personal taste um, and see, like, how your guys' stack up, so. Let's check them out. Now, right off the bat here from Not an Extraterrestrial, it looks like he has a SAM 7 underfolder. So, big respect. Not the best stock out there, but hey, they are aesthetic as fuck. And it looks like he has 
uh, some paracord on there just so he has a nicer uh, chin weld, I'm assuming, from that optic mounted on that Ultimac rail. So Ultimac rail, you know, it does its job. He's able to mount that optic right there on, I'm assuming that's a primary arms red dot. He's got a light on there, so he's got all the basics he needs for a good fighting AK. I really like the vibe that he's going for here where it's like, I'm totally not in the CIA doing spook shit in the Middle East. And he's got the hat going there with the AKP, AK Peasants Badge, so represent. All right, so next up from Call Sign Drew, and I'm assuming that this is Airsoft. So <laughs> I have a lot of Airsofters that follow me and uh, they might have been confused. I was referring to real AKs, but we're still gonna judge this thing because uh, there are some decent looking airsoft guns out there, even though they are toys. And the reason why I say that this is airsoft is because of that little yellow band that is on the, uh, the trigger guard right there. That to me looks like something that would be, you know, put onto your gun at a local field because it passed chrono. Um, another thing is that uh, rail that you see right there. So that looks awfully like the LCT dust cover rail and is definitely not anything from Zenico or Texas Weapon Systems. But overall, it looks pretty decent, pretty good paint job. Looks like you just got done doing a paint job. And oh my God, are you doing that on your fucking balcony, dude? You savage. <laughs> it looks like you got the wall right there a little bit. But overall, it looks pretty good, even if it's airsoft. All right, next up is Guts249. And oh boy, uh, what do we got here? So clearly an alcoholic. He's got the Jameson going on. Uh, he's got the Chicom rig, so two signs that he's an alcoholic. And he's got his uh, just bare bones AK here. This man decided that sling is his attachment. And uh, you know, mad respect on that AK-74. I'm not sure who makes that AK-74. Might be a PSA, not sure. Um, one thing I will say about this particular gun is the wood. So mad respect, wood AKs, they look great. To me, it is not my favorite looking uh, <laughs> My favorite looking wood. I'm a more fan of a of the redwood AKs. Um, you know, again, this is all personal preference, but if this was my AK and I wanted to rock wood on it, I would probably go with more redwood furniture on it. But overall respect, uh, change your wood. All right, so next up in this picture, there's a lot to actually break down in this, and it took me a while to figure this out, if this was airsoft or if this was a real gun, but after I kind of looked more into it, this is definitely a real gun. The main thing is the magazine. So that is a 5.56 mag, and I'm looking at the grip right there. So there's obviously not a motor. So how airsoft guns work is that the motor is in the pistol grip, and you can see that there is like a hole right there. There's an empty space. So that's clearly not an airsoft gun. But then I was also looking at the locale that he was in. So this looks very much like Victorville, California. That a cursed AO that we host events at Milsom West. So this is definitely at Milsom West and I start looking more and if you look inside the brain bucket that he's got going on there, there's a bag of ammunition and that is definitely blank fire ammo. So this man is at Milsom West running this gun for blank fire and I've seen a lot of guys doing that recently uh, using 5.56 AKs to run blanks at our events and that definitely makes sense. Uh, 5.56 Blanks are very easy to get. And honestly, this makes a lot of sense for what we're gonna be seeing here in the future. I think 5.56 AKs are the future for AKs here in the United States. And I think he's trying to cover up the muzzle with the wall right there so we don't see the BFA. So for those of you who don't know, like BFAs are a blank firing adapter and they will absolutely ruin the cool factor of a photo. So I think he's trying to cover that up there um, because he is definitely at a Milsom West event. As far as the AK build goes, he's got the triangle folder on there. So mad respect, I love the look of that. And then it looks like he has Zenico for the rest of the furniture. So overall, pretty cool setup. All right, so next up from On Target Azimuth. Uh, he has got a pretty bare bones looking AK. Pretty cool looking paint job on it. Looks like he's used that gun a bunch. And he also has the drum going on and clearly another not airsoft gun. You can see on the grip right there, there's no place for a motor right there. And he's using the drum. So much respect, much love the drum magazines. I don't think drums get the respect that they get, uh, deserve. So 10 out of 10 on this, you know, obviously there's no red dot or optic on it or anything like that or a flashlight. Um, you know, might want to attach one of those in the future, but who knows, you might have tracer ammo on that drum, so no need for light. So next up from Swagmaster9259. He's got a pretty interesting setup going on here. He's got the tourniquet, the old Russian uh, tourniquet on the back there, which that looks kind of weird on a, uh, a 
that might be a fixed stock. I'm not sure if that's a fixed stock or a folding stock. I'm not sure how that would go for a cheek weld, but uh, it might be comfortable, honestly. That looks like it might, like if you have any facial hair, it might like pull out your freaking hairs on your face. But other than that, he's got the freaking bayonet. I've actually been looking for an AK-74 bayonet, so that is pretty freaking baller. And then he's got some weird type of optic. I have no idea what that thing is. It looks like an older, you know, some type of, it might be a red dot. I don't know. Some of these older optics uh, kind of have a hard time identifying. If you guys know what that is, please let me know down below. He's got the old school sling on there. Overall, not a bad setup. I want to attach a light on there, but man, you got a bayonet. Fuck it. Now, next up, we got our first crank from Greg's Guns. Greg Guns, if you don't follow him, he's got a ton of cool gats in his collection. He's got our crank with the RPK magazine, so super based. Uh, you actually see this being done a lot. It's just guys throwing RPK mags in their cranks. I think that is baller. And he's got a pretty cool setup here. He's got the stock pouch from, I believe, Rifle Dynamics. He's got an Aimpoint Pro on there, uh, mounted on the little crank site. And you know, he's got a classic sling on there. No light, fuck it. Maybe he's got tracer ammo. Again, tracer ammo beats lights. Overall, pretty cool setup. He's got the right color wood on there. He's got that classic reddish color on it. So much better than the uh, other AK that had the same um, furniture that looks like my dining room table. But overall, mad respect for Greg's guns with the crank. Uh, cranks are freaking sick. Now lastly, we have another crank from Firing Device, Electrical M57. Clay and I go way back, we're homies. And he, God, he's got the RPK mag. Man, the RPK mags on cranks looks freaking cool. He also has the Wolverine suppressor, as well as another Aimpoint Pro. So both him and Greg rocking the Aimpoint Pro on their cranks. He also has some weird type of light bar going on there, which looks functional because it gets a light past the handguard a little bit and you're not having to deal with mounting a light on there. He's got the pressure pad with the blue tape. The blue tape really completes the look. Um, you know, kind of mimicking the blue tape used on coupling magazines by the Russians. And overall, don't hate it. Looks kind of weird, but man, that's kind of what Clay's known for. He's got a bunch of weird setups. <laughs> but overall, guys, you got some pretty cool setups. Don't really hate any of them. Wish some of you guys would embrace the rattle can gods, but hey, it's your guns, you do what you want. And don't let me tell you how to set up your gun. You know, test some stuff out for yourself. Um, you know, what works for me might not work for you. And I hate it when people are like, oh, that setup's stupid because X, Y, Z. Like, hey, that guy's, whatever he's got going on is working out well for him. It's none of your fucking business. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider dropping a like and subscribing. You can also follow me on Instagram at Blue Jean Operator or go to my website, thebluejeanoperator.com to find school shirts and merch, which helps out the channel. Also guys, if you wanna get involved with the channel even more directly, you got Patreon, helps me buy guns, ammo, gear, all the kind of stuff that goes into running a gun channel. And it'll get you access to videos a little bit earlier than everyone else. But hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time.